today we're going to look at some creative ways of how we can split up the sections down the page of our website. Because having a fully white website is so, I don't know, 2007, 2013, one of those years. First we're going to break the sections up with color, and then we're going to add unique dividers to make the design a little bit more special. And once we've learned the technique for how we can do this, we'll push it, we'll see how far we can go. So let's jump into it. Alright, so we're starting on our home page, and right now all we have is a home page with fully white sections. So first what we're going to do is we're going to break up these sections with a little bit of color. So we'll go back up to the top and let's click on our second section and let's give this section, let's make it dark. So I've already set up a couple of different combo classes, uh, four different colors on top of the section. Uh, so I can click on dark blue for example and all I've done is I've added one of my colors as the background color, I've changed the text to white and then I've just uh, named that class accordingly. So if I were to create a new one, let me call this light green. Uh, I've made that class and now I can change the background color to a light green and now wherever I want to use that color I can just add it on. But for now we'll make this one darker, we'll make this a dark blue down here to this one, we'll make this a, a gray, a light gray maybe. Let's keep going down, let's make this one a light blue. And we'll keep that white. So already we've split up our page a little bit better just by recoloring some of these sections down the page. So now there's a bit more incentive to stop on each section and read the information. But now we're going to take this one step further by adding in specific dividers between each section. And the way that we're going to do this is simply by adding in SVG images of the dividers. And to make it even easier, I've added a Figma file that you can start from, uh, and so I'll put that link in the description below. And so what we have here is we have different examples of how we can split up uh, our sections down the page. So here we have kind of slashes to split them up, here we have curved kind of elements, uh, we've got wavy elements here. Uh, here we can use a gradient to, to split the section up, or we can combine some of those ideas together to create a completely different style. Uh, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to replace these colors with the actual colors that we're using on our website. So I'm going to go back to my website. So we're using white, so that's fine, but I'm going to pull the color from the dark color that we're using, the dark blue. Go back into our file, and I'm just going to select everything. Just select all of that, and we can see the colors that we're using. I'm just going to replace this uh, black with the dark blue that we're using. And I'm going to do the same uh, with the light gray. So I'm going to grab that light gray color, go back into our Figma file, and then drop that in where the gray is. And the only other thing I'll need to adjust is when it's being used for gradients. So uh, these next few ones are for the gradients. So I'm going to update this gray color. I'll update it uh, here too. And then I'll just grab this dark blue again and just update it uh, on this gradient down here paste that in. And so we've updated the colors. I'm going to add one more color in that we have on our website. I'm just going to drag these down with option shift. And we're going to change this to the blue that we've used. So I'm going to scroll down to where we have the blue, just copy this color again, go back in and paste in the blue. So now that we have this file set up, we can actually export all of these elements so we can use them in Webflow. So I'm going to select the elements that I want to export and we want them as SVGs, so that's fine. I'll hit export eight layers. Just save that in my downloads for now. And we'll flick back to our website, go on our image tab, and I'll just upload those. Select them all and go open. Now in terms of actually adding these into our sections, there are a couple of ways that we can do this, but I'm gonna actually add them as a background image to the sections. So what I'll do is I'll first go up to our very first section and I'm going to add a combo class that kind of explains what we're actually adding. So I'm going to add dark blue bottom slash. And you can name yours differently if you want to. This is just one way that you can do it. But now that we have that class set up, we're going to click on uh, the background image and we're going to choose the actual divider that we're going to use. And we'll use this one for now. Now we don't want that tiling, so we're going to turn off tiling and we're going to position it at the very bottom of the div. Now the only other thing that we want to do is because we've added in this divider inside of the section, uh, the padding looks a little bit off, so we're just going to adjust the padding uh, just to when it looks about right. So let's do, how does it look like that? Let's do a little bit more, so that's 130, let's do 150. And that looks about right to me. And since we've done this to the section itself, that's going to actually adjust for all the different screen sizes already. Down there on tablet it's working, and even on mobile. 
So now that that's working, let's add this a couple more times down our page. I'll go into my second section and it's going to be a light gray bottom divider. Do the same process, stop the tiling, adjust it to the bottom, and we're going to choose the divider and then just adjust that padding. And I'll take some off the top as well. Maybe about that much. And we'll see how that looks. And we'll see, I've actually used the white one by accident. So I'm just gonna go back in, just update that. Change that to be our gray one. And that's better. And so now let's look back through our page again. So I'm gonna hit preview. We'll see how that looks. So the first section is sliding into the next section with a slash and that's going into the next section with a slash and so on and so on. And because of the way I've set this up, at any time I can switch the direction of the slash, I'm just going to go in and change this to uh, the other way and that's working fine. So we've split up the sections of our page using a slash and of course if we don't want to use a slash we can use different ones as well. We can use this curve section or we can use this wavy section. By doing the exact same thing, we're just going to export those elements and then import them into Webflow. Now for the gradient dividers, I wouldn't recommend actually making it a background image. You can just do that manually inside of Webflow. So we'll go back into Webflow and let's go down and try one of these gradients. We're going to make this white move into this blue. And so I'm going to add another combo class on top of my color. I'll just do white blue gradient and we'll do a background gradient. We'll go into our gradient. This top one is going to be white and the bottom one is going to be blue. And I might adjust that a little bit. And then I might just adjust the padding on this one so that it transitions into the section a little bit better. I'm going to actually um, up the padding here, make that 180. And I'm just going to uh, remove some of the margin. Uh, and this way the gradient is starting a little bit earlier on in the section before and then kind of becomes blue. Uh, as it gets to the section. I might just adjust this blue a little bit, move that a bit more forward. And so it transitions from white into blue, and now it's fully light blue when it's in that section. And so that's just another option of how we can split up our sections down the page. But now that we've learned how to do this, let's see how far we can push it. Let's make a section using these dividers that has an eye that follows you as you scroll down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create a new section uh, for this element that we're about to make. I'm just going to delete all of the content from here. Uh, in fact, let's get rid of the container as well. And we'll make this top section uh, light blue as well. And then we're going to have dividers uh, at the top of this section and at the bottom of this section. I'm going to pop into Figma and I'm going to recolor the top and the bottom of these sections into that blue that we're using on the website. Just paste that in and, and I'm just going to change out the blue for the one that we've used in the website as well. And so let's say we want it to look like this and we have our two elements and now we'll export them as SVG so they can scale. Save that and we'll import it into our website. And this time we're not going to make it a background image just because we want the eye elements to go underneath these sections. So this top one will drop in. And we're going to make this image absolute because it's going to stick to the top. Let's do outside I. This one is to the top. Do zero at the top. And we're just going to copy paste that. And we're going to change this one to the bottom. And move this element sticking to the bottom of the section. And as you can see, our section's a bit small, so we're just gonna increase the size of that. Just create a new combo class for my section. We'll make that, maybe a thousand is too much, maybe just 300, let's try 400 for now. And I'm actually just gonna go back and export that eye that we've made. We'll just export that again as an SVG. Let's call that eye pupil image and drop that into Webflow. And we'll add that image in. Just call that eye pupil image. And this image is going to start in the center of our div. Uh, let's just move that to the center. And now we're just going to add an interaction in to actually move the eye around. So let's go into our interactions. 
let's do a page trigger while we move the mouse in the viewport. It's going to move the eye. And so towards the left hand side, it's going to look that way. Let's move it. Let's do negative 35 of the viewport width and back the other way. 35 of the viewport width. And let's also move it up and down a bit. So on our Y, we're going to move it up slightly. Let's pull that back about 100 pixels and also move it forward 100 pixels. And I'm just going to quickly change the Z index uh, of this top lid before we do anything else. So I'm actually going to do it for both to the outside eye and just make that Z index a bit higher. And now we can test out our interaction. Let's go back into it. Just do the live preview on and that's going to look at our mouse as we scroll down. And it's actually coming out of this section a little bit just at the top when we go too high and we'll quickly fix that. We'll go into our section and we're going to change the overflow to off so that the eye uh, isn't visible when it goes outside of the bounds. And uh, finally, we can preview this. So let's preview it and let's scroll down to our eye section and it's moving around now as we scroll down. So the only other thing we want to do is make sure this looks good on all screen sizes. Uh, we'll just change the height to actually adjust for viewport. Let's do 20 viewport width maybe. It's a bit low. Let's do 50. Too much. 40 is about right. And we'll do the same for the pupil. For the height, let's try 20 viewport width. A little bit small, how about 30? Too much. 24 is about right. And so that's still gonna be working on desktop. If we go a bit bigger, everything's gonna get a bit bigger. And if we go a bit smaller, that's gonna adjust accordingly right down to mobile. And so we've looked at a couple of different ways that we can split up our sections. First, we can do it with just color, and then we can add in dividers if we want to. And if we want to go even further, we can get really creative with those dividers. So thanks for watching. And if there's something that you would have done a slightly different way, let me know how in the comments below. But otherwise, subscribe if you want more, and I'll see you on the next one.